there's, there's, there's a longer list, but the, the three primary ones are, are your food, your energy, and your banking system. Um, is that correct? Is, Michael, is that, is that right? And yeah, I would, I would say this is pretty much there. I don't know what, how Stephen feels about that, but it starts with the banking because that, that frees up the money for the people to then you know provide the, the alternative energy and electricity and that allows the people to then utilize that free electricity and energy to create abundance starting with food and you know water and housing and security and, and uh, health care and everything else. It follows. The, once you got that, it's, it becomes a chain reaction, a domino effect if you want to call it that. Excellent. Now, I want to go, just to finish off now, I want to go through just, just a round. Sorry, the... yeah, Scott. Scott, yes, can I just Stephen, I was going to ask you, yes. Um, I, I'd just like to uh, re repeat a quotation from Henry Kissinger. Um, he said uh, one, uh, some years ago, who controls the food supply controls the people, who controls the energy controls the nations. And I think that's what it all revolves around, and we need to break away from that. Sure, Thank well. you, Stephen. That, that's really important that you brought mm, that up. And yeah, these well, statements mm, by these by these nasty politicians of the past are just spectacular. When you find them today, mm. and you realize that they've really got the global community and the draconian enslavement of the, the people of the world to the to the point to this to this the, this cutting edge where we now have to stand up and say we're no longer be going to be bullied into this submission and control by these people. Yeah, very, very well put. Um, and, and agreed. Uh, it's really, I mean, anyone listening to this, I think, will start to really understand that there's more to it. And especially, you know, I want, I want you to finish off last, Michael, I want you to talk a little bit about your book, because ultimately that's where they can get a lot, a lot more detail on this. But just to finish off, uh, you know, we've talked about those three things. You know, I hope, hoping that people listening to this will realize that the Ubuntu Party is really made up of, of a group of people um, that are very different, but very well enlightened, very well researched, and have a wealth of practical, real experience, uh, as opposed to, you know, this, this kind of system-driven mentality where everything has to fit into the existing blueprint that's been already laid out for us. And heaven forbid we change that blueprint, because if we do, we are labeled nutcases and conspiracy theorists. And that's got to end now. And um, I love it when, you know, when we talk about that awkward moment when your friends suddenly start realizing that the conspiracy theorist that they've always dreaded is actually right. And that awkward moment is going to start being felt by a lot of people around South Africa and around the world when they realize basic, simple truths that they have grown up with are not quite as set in stone as we've always believed. So just to finish off, Stephen, is there anything you want to, to, to finalize, to, to want to add to this discussion for, for those listening? And this will be sent to 160,000 you know, New Era members. Uh, plus, of course, will be put all over social media, and we're hoping that people who are serious about Ubuntu and haven't yet been able to make up their mind will be able to get the full, well, not the full picture, but certainly go into to more detail as to what Ubuntu is about. <laughs>